Welcome back to Lamori La Musique and to my review of the March Beauty Heroes box featuring the crowd-pleasing brand Ranavat. Well, I have to say, even though I have been using Ranavat products regularly as part of my routine for the last two and a half years, I never tire of seeing these products show up in a beauty subscription box. I think that Ranavat has just grown into, what do I want to say, established place in green beauty where the products are just so solid, you know that they're going to deliver. And I think for that reason, there's always just a lot of excitement and enthusiasm for receiving these products. If you have followed L'Amour at all, you know that I'm no stranger to reviewing Ranavat products. I reviewed last February's box, I think it was, which featured the, at the time, newly launched Luminous Ceremony cream cleanser. I've had Michelle on my podcast, Your Purpose is Beauty, last year. I'll link the video and the podcast episode down below. I think I also mentioned the cream cleanser and the facial polish, I think, in my Best of Beauty 2020 video, so I'll link that for you as well. Michelle is kind of a personal friend of mine. She grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. She actually went to the same high school one grade apart as my husband Kave, so he remembers her from high school. I think they were kind of tangentially in the same friend group or, or kind of knew of each other. So I got to meet Michelle in person in the spring of 2019, I think when baby Lamore was like four or five months old. She and I have done console wand masterclass together. I love and appreciate Michelle and so I'm excited to tell you about this month's Beauty Heroes box. Okay, so hero product this month is the Imperial Glow facial polish. It looks like this. And then the two sidekicks are the Fortifying Hair Serum and the Sacred Rose Hand Cream. I also have a hand cream here. I also brought out the rest of my Ranavat products, my beloved Consa Wand, Radiant Rani, Jasmine Hydrating Mist. I uh, also knew in my life as the Eternal Rain Renewing Bakuchi Cream. What else? Yeah, and then the cleanser. So I feel like I could do this review in my sleep. I know the products really well. It may not be a lot of new information, but I'm just gonna kind of run through my thoughts on these products and my experiences. Sometime within the last six months, maybe even four months, Michelle rebranded and went into new packaging. I don't have any of the old packaging handy, but I, I'm sure it's in some past empty products videos, but the products are now, now come luxuriously packaged in these, I mean, this is a soul color. This is like, I just, I cannot with this kind of jade hunter green. It's, oh, it's on the level of my Azure Azurite indigo blue soul color affinity. Um, but yeah, these boxes just make for such a gorgeous, gorgeous experience. I feel like maybe you could repurpose them for something else. You could take out this little part, use them for something because they're kind of too beautiful to recycle or, or get rid of. Okay. Imperial Glow Facial Polish, 100 mils retails for $42. I'm actually not going to open this one because I already have this open one that I've been testing for a couple months and I'm gonna gift this brand new one that came in the box away. I feel like there's been so much interest and enthusiasm in this product really coming on the heels of how popular the cream cleanser was. Lots of people have come to love this product. I have to say I love the packaging. I keep both of these kind of sitting in a little cup on my vanity like with like my hairbrush and my dry brush just so they're like easily accessible. Um, I feel like you can get every last bit of product out with one of those metal keys. Uh, it's travel friendly if anybody's traveling. And yeah, just generally wonderful recyclable packaging. This has amla, ashwagandha, Indian sarsaparilla, licorice root, lotus flower, cobra saffron. So the exfoliating particles in this are refined rice granules that are spherical and smooth, which yields a non-abrasive exfoliation. Lots to say about that as someone that has struggled with many physical exfoliants on and off over the years. Fortifying hair serum, 50 
50 mils retails for $70. This was one of the first Ranavat products that I tried when they were first featured as an indie discovery in the fall of 2018. Ranavat was introduced to Beauty Heroes around that time and I gave birth right in the beginning of November 2018 so it was all like kind of a blur to me but when I came out of you know my immediate month or two month postpartum haze I was diving into like the Beneath Your Mask and the Wabi Sabi and the Ranavat and I picked this product up and kind of connected with Michelle right around the time three four months postpartum when you start to lose your hair this was like a divinely timed product in my life when I first discovered it because I started doing scalp treatments with it and I cannot say for sure that this was what helped but my postpartum hair loss was really not that bad certainly not compared to other women that I knew that were like had like bald spots on the sides and, and kind of underneath the back of their hair very common and obviously it does grow back but mine was my postpartum hair loss was honestly pretty minimal and I really got a lot of use out of this hair serum at the time and I found that it was extremely extremely helpful this also has amla extract, jasmine oil, and sunflower oil. You're meant to apply two to three drops to the palms of your hands and you can use it as like kind of a smoothing treatment or you can use it as like an overnight scalp treatment, doing a massage and letting it sit as long as you want and then shampooing out. Really like that they included the Sacred Rose hand cream because it's just a beautiful little product. This one ounce retails for 32. I mean, the it's so beautiful. I mean, one of the most beautiful packaging designs I've seen. And again, I just love this kind of tube. The only downside I would say is when you start using up the product and if this goes in and out of a cosmetics bag, for example, I do find that this kind of metal can be prone to like cracking and breaking. Yeah. I mean, it's really only if it's getting kind of banged around and on the go with you type of thing. Super power ingredients in this are aloe vera, damask rose, mangista oil, sesame seed, sunflower oil, and sweet almond oil. All right, total value of the box. Let me total it up quickly. $144. As always, I'll have a link down below if you'd like to go sign up to become a Beauty Heroes member. You can do month to month. You can do three, six, and 12 month subscriptions, I think. Let's get a little more in depth in the products. Imperial Glow facial polish. Let me show you what it looks like. Scent is very, very similar to the Luminous Ceremony Cream Cleanser. I'll pump out a little bit of this as well so you can see it side by side. This has like a very kind of light green tint. Uh, you can also see the exfoliating little exfoliating agents in it. So experience wise, it it's, feels like it's in a very similar cream base as the Luminous Ceremony Cream Cleanser, which I find is relatively unusual for, well, I mean, it depends. It has more heft to it, I would say, than a lot of comparable physical exfoliants. I tend to have a lot of trepidation around anything with physical uh, exfoliating particles in it. Just because over the last several years, my skin has become more sensitive, very common for a lot of reasons, pregnancy, postpartum, age, um, hormonal changes, kind of like all of it. So what has tended to happen over the last two, three years is I will just get especially a lot of redness and irritation in my jawline. And I just don't necessarily even feel that I'm getting a good exfoliation. My skin has just needed a lot more babying and pampering in recent years. So like a steam and a really, really nice hydrating mask. For example, if I need exfoliation, I'm inclined to do something like an Earthwise Sun God or a Lil Fox Cleopatra, something that is not going to kick up that redness in my skin. So I remember vividly the first time I used this second cleanse. I had already taken my makeup off with a balm. I was going to be taking a shower. So I did a generous amount. I very kind of lightly applied it. I didn't do a lot of manual movement. I let it sit on my skin for a good couple minutes before hopping in the shower. Then I kind of, you know, washed, shaved, did whatever I need to do in the shower, washed it off with lukewarm water. So it had been on my skin maybe five minutes. 
And I have to say after that one use, I was really impressed with just kind of the quick pick me up effect that I give. I actually, that it gave, I actually found that this seemed to calm down my skin, which is quite unusual for a product like this. I didn't get any redness in the jawline and my skin looked like it had softened a bit, that it had been a bit calmed and was just kind of had like a quick little refresh. So I had a very pleasant experience and I've continued to have a pleasant experience using this product. I've really enjoyed it. Now, it's not a heavy hitter type of exfoliant, right? It's not gonna do the heavy lifting that I actually feel like I need this time of year. My skin has been so dull, so combination, like flaking on my forehead, um, really dry on the cheeks, really dull, really lackluster notoriously hard time of year. I feel like this transition into spring is just hard on the body and it can show up in increased sensitivity and, you know, these sorts of, of issues. So this is not going to work miracles when my skin needs something more intensive, right? Like more attention, esteem, multi-masking, more occlusive products. But if I need a pick-me-up or in the summertime or when my skin is just kind of more balanced and in a more effortless place, beautiful midweek pick-me-up. You know, if I just want to do something kind of quick before the shower, the experience is incredibly pleasant. This is a wonderful moisturizing second cleanse on me. Never has dried my skin out. I love it for fall, winter, spring. I tend to go for something a little lighter in the summertime, but really a wonderful combination. And if you like this and you are looking for a product that just has that little bit of extra oomph. I mean, the rice in this is very fine. It doesn't feel abrasive at all. It's somewhat reminiscent, but not nearly as intense as like the Dermalogica Microfolian, if I'm remembering correctly. I used to use a rice granule exfoliant from Dermalogica like a decade ago, but that was more concentrated. The particles in here are pretty dispersed. They're not like super dense. Do you know what I mean? So I think... That's a pretty sufficient rave. Really, really enjoy both of these a lot. All right, fortifying hair serum. Oh, fortifying hair serum. It's no secret, and I have had conversations with Michelle about this. I feel like I mention it every time I do a Ranavat review. I mentioned it in the podcast. I think I mentioned it last year when I reviewed the box. Really was sad for me when she changed her jasmine supplier in this product. So if anyone tried the Ranavat hair serum, in 2018 and early 2019, she was using a different jasmine supplier. And to me and other people who I've talked to, there was a more, there, it was like a fruitier, a slightly punchier, a slightly tropical jasmine, kind of hard to explain, but um, there was something so unique and amazing about it. It was just unlike any jasmine I had ever smelled. Fruity jasmine, it was just very, very blissful. You know, Michelle and I have talked about this. She has said that most people have not ever mentioned a difference. They can't tell a difference at all. I don't know. But to me, the change was very obvious, right? Um, the new one, I mean, it's been, it's been in production, I would say, for at least a year now. I mean, I am still ki kind of getting the fruity notes, but up front, this one is a lot more powdery smelling, more of like a traditional jasmine smell. Um, very floral, but there is still that that undertone of the fruity note. It's just not as pronounced. There's more of like an initial powdery hit to me. I am probably one of those rare few that really preferred the original. However, I will still use this <laughs> because I think it's a great product. I am also, in addition to my skin being a bit of a dry, weird, trying to get to spring transition wreck. My hair has also been driving me insane lately. It's been very dry. I was kind of ranting about this on my live stream this morning. Part of it is that I need a cut. I had too many layers put in last time and so the ends are just looking extremely raggedy. I have been testing a new shampoo for my IBE awards project, Nature Labs Tokyo, and I hate it. I think it's not doing good things to my hair. Very rarely do I have this strong of a reaction to a shampoo. Most of the time, unless they completely don't work, like the Josh Rosebrook hair products, that's like a different issue. Those just don't get the hair clean for the most part. Like the Nature Lab shampoos function fine. Like they lather well, you think your hair is getting clean, but they just, oh, not a match for my hair whatsoever. 
not the point of this video, but I've been just having extremely dry hair, so I find myself having to mix oils with leave-ins so that it doesn't look too oily, and then I still feel like my hair is looking dry, and I'm just having issues in this department. So this will definitely be getting a workout, both as a scalp treatment and as like a daily moisturizing, taming type of product. And let's just hope that by the end of March and into April, I'm a little bit recalibrated. Now the Sacred Rose Hand Cream. Beautiful little travel size. Again, um, a very complimentary scent to the rest of the products in Rana Vat's line. I'm rediscovering the magic of the close-up, which means I don't have to film a separate close-up after I'm done recording. Beautiful rose scent. You have to like rose. To me, the rose here smells more traditional, if you will, than kind of the cool, modern, more modern, watery type of rose that I've always described this as. Still really beautiful, but I think it's that damask rose, and I'm not sure if there's damask rose in this as well, but leaves a really nice finish on the hands. Um, you know, I don't have tons of quibbles about different hand creams. Most of them perform relatively similarly on me in terms of how they moisturize and kind of how how they leave the skin. A noteworthy exception to that might be the African Botanics Marula hand cream, which really does seem to have like a perfecting quality to it. I tried that last year through Boxwalla. But yeah, I mean, this is a really, really nice product. And given how much everyone's been washing their hands this year, love that she came out with this. So that's the box. I mean, I, I think it's wonderful. I love Ranavat products. Um, I have been using the Hydrating Jasmine Mist as part of my routine. I love how simple this is. It's a micro fine mist. I talked about this somewhere recently, maybe like at a Mercedes shops where I had shown PR. I had gotten this in a PR package a couple of months ago. One of the finest, if not finest, micro mist dispensers um, I've ever used. It's extremely, extremely fine. And I've just been going for such a simple routine lately that I find that this is just really fitting the bill for me right now. Have to say, love that she put Radiant Ronnie or now Brightening Saffron Serum. I guess, she, I guess it is still Radiant Ronnie. Kind of love that she put it in clear glass because it's very healing to look at this color. I, I know I talked about this somewhere else, so I don't want to belabor it here, but um, wonderful product, very comparable in effect to something like Laurel Sun Serum, Earthwise Ruby, uh, just those really high antioxidant, environmental protection, skin evening. I mean, it's kind of on an all-in-one oil serum type of product. And then she recently came out with the Renewing Bakuchi Cream, you know, to top the oil if that's something that people are looking for it. Now this, I am still kind of, it's still in the testing queue. Um, I've done a lot of kind of playing around with the texture. Scent wise, the Renewing Bakuchi Cream definitely has like more of a departure from the rose and the jasmine. It has this real kind of earthy, almost like seed-like smell. So I don't know, and I don't have the ingredient list in front of me with this, but texture again, like almost silicone-y feeling would be a really good primer for makeup actually, but probably rich enough for overnight. Um, I have to say, I think her packaging design is, is top notch. I mean, this is just beautiful on a vanity, but personally, I'm so always waffling around on Bakuchi all, just a personal, personal thing I have since it became a thing however long ago, uh, but that's kind of neither here nor there for this video. And then of course, you know, can't live without the console wand. Been using it really regularly on and off over the last year. I did my first month long console wand project last March, actually, so exactly a year ago. I did another one in September. I was gonna do one in January, and the beginning of this year just really kicked my butt <laughs> in a lot of ways. So I would like to do another month long project with or without gua sha alongside. Um, I'll make sure to link all of the places I've talked about the console wand. Michelle talked about it a lot in the podcast episode that she and I had done together. All right, I hope that if you're new to Ranavat that this was kind of a helpful breeze through of everything 
I wholeheartedly kind of recommend and endorse these products, use them, love them. I was just checking my email and saw that Beauty Heroes is hosting a masterclass with Michelle on Thursday, March 11th. So I'm hoping you're gonna see this at some point on Sunday the 7th or Monday the 8th. So you have time to go sign up and attend that live. I think if you can't be there live, Beauty Heroes does upload the classes to their YouTube channel. I'm working my way through the Yina masterclass and I want to watch the Mukti masterclass as well. I've been trying the Mukti Calm Collection story for another day, but I'm quite impressed with that so far. Again, all the info will be down below. I'm trying to think of other announcements. Next week, please make sure that you come tune in because I'm going to give you a tour of the new eco mattress bedding situation that was almost like a year in the making, like deciding what we were going to get really intensively the last six months. But I had started doing preliminary research almost a year ago and it all came to fruition in December and everything was finally delivered to us by kind of beginning middle of February. So I'm working with The Clean Bedroom, uh, a retailer out of New York with several other locations around the country to bring a nice discount code to people that I'm gonna kind of talk you through exactly what we got, the bed, the frame, the bedding. I've already filmed it and I'm really excited to put that out next week. I also have two really exciting interviews coming up on my podcast, Your Purpose is Beauty. I'm having a return guest, my friend Marie from And the Color Green. We have a really unedited, honest conversation about the rifts and polarization going on in green beauty as it's mirroring the outer scape, like so much of the intense polarization we've seen socially over the last year. So we got into that in the context of beauty. And then the week, I think the last Monday of March, I'm going to have my interview with Julie Elliott from Infiore. Could not be more excited for you to hear that in my wildest dreams, like would I ever have imagined I would have Julie Elliott on my podcast or in some kind of Lamore content, no. But here we are and I'm so thrilled and I can't wait to get that out to you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you'll tune in next weekend. Bye.